Hello, this is Frederik Steinmetz for Blender Diplom, and this is our winter special. And uh, I didn't pick anything Christmassy, but we have some snow and frosty. So, what you see here is some wheat with a little bit of frost, and you got some snowflakes that are sort of reflecting in the sun. So, this is done in cycles, and uh, it requires a couple of steps, a lot of compositing, but nothing too fancy. So, let's just get started. Um, first, you need Arboro or Arboro, I'm not sure. Uh, just go to sourceforge.net slash project slash Arboro and or just type download Arboro in Google and um, download the software and then uh, save it somewhere and then uh, locate your directory and uh, go ahead and launch the application. This is what it looks like and it has a lot of settings and none of them are self-explanatory but we're not going to go over them today. All we're going to need to do is open, and you're automatically in the directory called trees. If not uh, located, it's uh, inside the Abara folder. And you see you have a lot of um, presets over here. So uh, let's just take the wheat XML, import it, and you can see it gives you this stem that you see here. So all we need to do now is to export this and um, choose wavefront object because this is the pro uh, the format that Blender understands. You can export the UV coordinates, it's not necessary. Then choose a directory and press start. And uh, I'm not going to do that before I already executed this. So I'm just going to close this, close Arbro and head over to Blender. So inside Blender go to File, Import, Wavefront Object and locate your wheat object. It's over here for me and I'm just going to import that and there you have it it's a little um, bush of wheat so um, I'm going to add a camera you probably don't need to do that and I'm going into front view and press control 0 to make this the active camera and press control alt 0 and this will uh, set the camera to the current view that you're in and uh, I'm going to zoom out a little and uh, now you can see those are separate objects so what I'm going to do is select these stems then B and um, draw a box around the rest press ctrl P and select parent to object now if I s uh, scale the stems the rest follows okay so uh, let's go into side view press shift C to center the cursor press shift A mesh plane okay now um, go into edit mode and select those two vertices only, press E, and extrude them out. So uh, yeah, this is uh, going to produce a very smooth background, so I have to press smooth, and S and X and scale this up. And I'm going to position the camera a lot closer towards the weed, or let me just check. Now I'm going to scale up the weed, so this has a very similar effect. Oops. If I press G and then middle mouse button, then you can move the mouse to uh, move the camera along its um, local Z axis. And this is very handy to if you want to position the camera. And you can see it's probably a good idea to extrude this one more time. And I accidentally pressed O, so disable connected. And um, move this up a little. And I need to scale this because uh, it's going to be um, lit by a lamp that we'll be creating and if it's too close to that lamp then we'll get a very harsh light streak or light on that camera and you can see it's still outside the camera so S and Z will scale this up and if I now go to top view you can see that the wheat has a lot of stems that are pointing towards the camera and they'll be in the way so I'm going to rotate it like this so not many uh, stems point towards the camera and we have a better view on what we're rendering. So if you select the camera and press limits then you'll see the uh, this yellow cross here and this is the focal depth. So if I increase the distance here you can see the yellow cross wandering and I want it to be exactly in the middle so uh, one point 865 
nope, 1.845. There we go. That should be in the middle. So this one, this one, this one are in focus, and these two should be as well. Okay, so that's a good start. And uh, now let's create this frosting. And um, what I did there is I added a plane and um, scale this down and go into edit mode and I delete this vertex, press A to select all and F to create a new face. And W and subdivide and now all you need to do is uh, sort of distort this thing and uh, give it some jagged edges. And I'll press Shift D or actually let's give it a material first and let's call this material frost. So um, since we're giving this solidify modifier later on, and right now the normals are pointing towards us, the solidify modifier will then project towards us, and we can't really uh, see the vertices anymore. So I'm going to press A twice, and Control F, flip the normals. This is just so the modifier points downwards, the so solidify modifier. Okay, I'm going to duplicate this, Shift D and move it over here and just distort this in another way so that we have different shards. W subdivide and uh, I'm going to create one shard with a hole in the middle because I found this to work fairly well. Subdivide, don't go crazy with the subdivide modifier. Um, X and edges so, uh, um, let's create those faces anew. I'm pressing F, by the way, and delete this one, and then fill another face. Okay, so um, that should do. It doesn't need to be that precise. And uh, there we go, we have three different shards, and you g have to make sure that the origin point of the shard is at one of the corners. So, um, just so that, the, um, that those particles won't stand out too far. And if I uh, select those all, press Ctrl G, they'll be added to a group indicated by them turning green. And here in this tool menu you get with a T, you can type in the name of the group, and I'll call this um, Frost Particles. Okay. Frost Particles, and of course, if we want to use this group, we need to set up a particle system. And um, you can see the wheat has three different objects. Those are kind of spiky objects that poke through the um, seeds over here, and we're going to ignore those but we're going to take the seeds and make a particle system on them. So plus, and uh, I tried hair earlier, but that uh, didn't work that well. So uh, what I'm going to do now is leave it at emitter, but set the physics to no. So now that we don't have any physics, they won't move, but uh, we don't see many particles. You can see there are a few, but uh, we checked a thousand. And that is because most of them are not born yet. So if I click unborn, you can see all the particles get uh, show up. But they're halos. And we don't want halos because first cycles can't even render halos. And also uh, they don't look like ice. So select group over here and uh, select the frost particles. And you can see now we have the shards. But they are too big, so I'm going to go into top view and locate my group over here and scale it down. And you can see that uh, it didn't affect the particles, and the reason for that is uh, the particles ignore the scale setting that you see over here. And uh, if you want them not to ignore that, press Control A and uh, say Scale. And uh, now, if you click on one of those particles, you see the scale is back to 1, 1, 1, but the dimensions remain the same. So um, now our shards are very small. You can see them over here. Um, but that is because the size here is very small. So let's double that. And we can see that was already too much. So 0.08 should do. 
and um, we want a lot more so I'm going to put another zero behind that and now my system is already becoming fairly uh, slow but we can just uh, go to the modifiers and hide the emitter that's fine now um, you can see the seeds are a bit um, jagged and they should be round in nature so press control 1 and that will apply a, sol a subserve modifier of 1 but it's still set to render a level of 2 so decrease that 1 is perfectly fine and uh, let's have a look at the materials the stems will get a translucent material and they already have materials assigned to them coming from Arboro but they are not cycles compatible but all you need to do is check use notes and for the stems I want a translucent material and we'll make them a brownish color don't make them too dark because we want to the Sun to appear shining through them then we have the seeds and um, Let's give those just a diffuse material and make this not as dark. Something like that should do fine. And uh, third and last, we have those. And uh, again, leave this at um, uh, diffuse material and give it a sli slightly brighter color than the seeds. Okay, um, those are the basic materials for the stems. Now we get to a material that's a little more complex, and this is the frosting. If I press Control left arrow, I'm getting to the node editor. And this is the node setup that we're going to recreate later, but where right now we need the cycles material nodes. And um, I'm going to change into top view here and um, scale these up a little. And as you remember, scaling them up won't harm the particles. And I'm going to save this and go into render view. Okay, so I can see what I'm doing with the material. And this is rendering, okay. And um, if I use a texture, and I'm going to use a noise texture, and connect this to the color, you can see that the noise texture is affecting the color of the shards. And um, you can see that the noise texture is somewhat similar to the clouds, but you don't have many options, and it by default it is colored. But we don't want that. So uh, if we increase the scale, you can see that the clouds actually decrease. So if I set this to 100, we have fairly small clouds. But I don't want these clouds to affect the color of my mesh. I want them to affect the displacement. And you can see that is working, but if I want to change the intensity, I need a converter, math node, drag that in between, set it to multiply, and say something like 2. Okay, those are working, but of course they don't need to be diffuse. They should be a glass material, because this is the closest we get to actual um, frost. Uh, if you leave the IOR up at 1.4, that just uh, creates some weird dark parts because uh, light is getting bent and we don't have a complete environment. So just set this to 1 and it will also save you some render time. And set the roughness up to 0.2. That should do nicely. Okay, don't, wor don't worry that those are not looking like frost at all. That is because there's no lighting yet. So I'm going to go out of blen uh, rendered view. And I'm going to insert a sun lamp uh, lamp sun if you want less harsh shadows from the sun lamp then you can scale it up and uh, once you leave it at um, scale of one then you get um, I'm sorry I forgot you I think you get fairly soft shadows and if you scale it to point oh oh one you get fairly harsh shadows uh, correct me if I'm wrong here Okay, the emission should be something like 15. Oh, actually, no, that's too much. Let's let's make it a 5 and give it a slightly cold light. And I gave the world background. If you don't see this, just click Use Notes and uh, also give this a bluish color and uh, leave the strength at 1. That's fine. So I'm going to save this again. And scenes that have 
only one sunlight tend to look very dull even um, and of course the dullest result you can get is just using the world lighting and uh, just one sun won't uh, give us these nice contrasts that I'm going for and um, in order to get those we'll need an actual mesh light shift a mesh plane the orientations of the normals doesn't matter that much because cycles is emitting from both sides and uh, rotate this so it um, use it's being used as a backlight so um, the main source of light comes from behind those stems and um, uh, you can put this fairly far down. <laughs> okay, I don't see it because it's way off. If you go into top view, I can see that. Yes, and uh, let's push this up a little higher. And I'm in normal mode. Go to global and uh, push this up a little higher and give it a emission material emission material and set the strength to roughly 15 and give this a little warmer color so direction yellow and uh, that should do you can see the light is very much in the camera view we don't want that so go to the object settings and uncheck camera so it won't be visible by the camera and uh, you have to twirl down the array visibility for that okay so um, I think we're ready for our first test render. So let's uh, click on render it here. If you don't have this option, you need to enable the cycles renderer up here. OK, and we can see that it's much too dark. So first of all, let's select uh, the plane and add a new material and make this a lot darker, something like that. And uh, also give it a slightly bluish color. And you can see you can um, toy around with the backness brightness, background brightness just by using this slider and uh, this blue stripe here is fairly nice but um, I do not want it down there so what I'm going to do is uh, I'll rotate this a little and also move it up because this dark stripe is actually uh, sort of like getting cast by the light being emitted in this direction and in this direction but right at where the plane is p uh, pointing this direction there won't be any, any light so uh, this is what's causing this dark blue stripe and we can influence that stripe by uh, rotating the light Let's set this back to rendered and if I press R and X you can see that the light streak uh, that the dark stripe actually climbs up and uh, this is roughly the position where I want it. This is starting to look pretty much exactly how I want it. You can see the particles are not getting rendered, and that is because they're still hidden. So uh, if I select this and get the particles back, then I should see them. OK. So right now they're still fairly black. But um, we can change that by giving them a cheating material. We can also increase the light of this, the um, strength of this light. We can either scale it up or increase the strength over here. And then for those shards, I'm going to uh, select one of them. We are going to force them to get, oops, to get brighter. Okay, and we'll do that by adding a shader add node. And once we're adding an add node, this is not physically correct anymore, but that doesn't matter at all. What I'm going to do is add a translucent shader and um, add this to the normal glass shader. And this should increase the brightness of those uh, snowflakes. And I'll test that. And we can see now they are a lot brighter. So um, this is starting to get um, fairly decent, but I think we need a lot more particles because it's hardly visible. So um, I've select the seeds again, and uh, let's put this to 3,000, uh, 30,020. And don't worry too much about the particles 
uh, about the number of particles because they are regarded as, in, as instances by cycles and they won't eat much render power. Just one great thing about the cycles render engine. Okay, so these are looking fairly frosted now. Maybe we can um, increase, um, sorry, decrease the brightness of the seeds so they're uh, much more visible. So I'm just turn this down a little. And uh, by the way, if you want to um, sort of uh, make the seeds stand out a little in the uh, viewport view, you can change the color in the viewport view just by uh, changing the color over here under settings. So I've let this render for 13 and a half minutes now. And uh, this is what it looks like. So in comparison to the other picture or to the original picture, we have an, a lot more, a lot stronger backlighting effect. So we have uh, this very bright area and this will sort of interfere or li interfere a little with the original compositing process that I had going. But uh, I really like the effect, so I'm going to use it anyways. And if you prefer the original effect, then you can just download the uh, blend file that is um, at the bottom of the video. So uh, let's get into the compositor. You'll need a, a window with the nodes open and uh, click on the scene nodes or uh, texture no uh, render nodes and apply use nodes and then also make a check for background. And I just noticed this is a viewer node. It should be a composite node. Okay, there we go. So this is what's going to be saved in the render result picture. And this is the viewer node, which will uh, project the picture on the background. This one. So uh, control up arrow to maximize the window because we're going to use the entire window. And let's add a filter glare node. The glare node uh, makes by default uh, create streaks and it only does so if you uh, turn down the threshold because 100% threshold is um, no effect at all. So uh, you can immediately see that this threshold or this effect does a whole lot and uh, down here you can see a few glare and the only control we have over this or you can see a few streaks, I should say, is with a threshold value. And that is not enough control for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put RGB curves in between. And I'll connect the viewer to the RGB curve so you can see what I'm doing. This is Control, Shift, and uh, left click on the RGB curves. Automatically connects the two. And now I'm going to slide the dark part or the dark part of the image. I'm going to slide this over here greatly darkening the, darkening the image. I think I'm going to do this even more until this uh, spot here is almost invisible. And then I'm going to bring up the brightness again. So uh, the bright parts will be bright, very bright actually, and the dark parts will be black, invisible. I mean, invisible to an add node. So if we now connect um, the viewer to the glare node, you can immediately see that we have um, streaks. And uh, they are a bit dominant for my taste. So I'm going to uh, make them smaller. And one idea to make to do that is the dilate erode node. Dilate erode node sort of takes the outline of things or of uh, black and white uh, or let's say the outline of black dots on a, a white dots on a black surface and makes them smaller. So this is sort of like scaling along the normals. So if I picked, uh, put this down to minus one, you can see that the really small dots disappear and only the larger ones stay, but also they get smaller. So uh, the reason why you don't see any glare at these dots here, even though they're white and they should be glaring, is because this is set to medium. Once you set this to high, you can see that also the smaller dots are get a glare. But this is, of course, still is way too much. So I'm going to turn down the fade, and this will shorten the streaks. OK, so this looks a lot better. I'm also going to increase the streaks by one. So we have five of them. And those are to 
uniform, so I'm going to uh, set the angle offset to roughly 30. So uh, this is looking a lot better now. You can probably even turn down the fade uh, even a little more, but um, I'm going to uh, check that once we've composited this over the original image. So let's uh, get a color mix node. And since we're um, transferring a black and white map onto this image, I'm going to use the um, add node or mode of the mix node. And uh, actually this needs to be on the bottom and this needs to be on top because the one on top will be uh, calculated first and then by the method described here, the one on the bottom will follow afterwards. And uh, since this is since this is an add node, it will disregard the black part and only add the white part to the image. Okay, there we go. So uh, we can see it that well. So uh, you can, with M, you can mute nodes and then you can see the difference. And you can see uh, just around here there's a little bit. So let's increase the factor of this to 2. And we can see that uh, there's a lot more streaks. We can. Um, the image here is fairly bright, so let's uh, get some RGB curves in the middle and just decrease the brightness. And that should also make the streaks pop a lot more. Okay, this looks actually a lot better. Um, we could go in and make some uh, color corrections because right now this picture is fairly blue. And um, the uh, I wanted to go for a sort of a mix of the warm uh, mesh light and the blue environment. So um, the mid-tones, which are basically around here and the uh, seeds, are represented by this color wheel and if I turn them a little warmer you can immediately see that this effect uh, lends a little warmth to the image and uh, the background might also get a tiny bit warmer and maybe a bit brighter. No, that's way too much. So, okay, you can see now we have a lot more contrast in the image. You can see that the very bright spots here get the streaks around them. Maybe they are overdoing it, but uh, that's up to your liking. And uh, I guess with this as the compositing, we're done with this render image. Of course, in the end, you should probably render this again in HD. But um, to try out compositing nodes, HD is a very large file and it at least my machine got very slow once I added a couple of color correction and glare nodes. So uh, this was it for the winter special. I hope you enjoyed this and maybe you have a uh, Christmas card now or something you can send to your friends. And uh, as I would say in Germany, slide nicely into the new year. That would be the literal translation then. And also have a nice holiday. So from Blender Diplom, um, goodbye. <laughs>